All right, thanks for staying with us now. A fraud-free and credible election is a necessary ingredient to the growth of democracy. However, election fraud has become a major challenge in Nigerian political system. Till date, reports show that elections in Nigeria have been mad with vote buying, falsification of results, underage voting, the use of security forces to intimidate voters, the use of thugs to intimidate voters, amongst others. Now, with the current reality of the just-concluded presidential elections of um, 2023 and the results declaration on the way, we are discussing the anomalies uh, and the way forward, right? Um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Weishu Africa one with a hashtag Weishu. All right, so I'm going to bring in Kunle in a minute, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts. Diola, you voted in Surulere. Chinelo, you voted in Onuri. I voted in Magodo. Let's just hear your general thoughts on this conversation. And Norma was an international observer, so, you know, it would be nice to hear everybody's thoughts on this. Quickly, um, come to you, Diola. What, what, what were your observations, you know, with these elections that we just had uh, on the 25th of February? Oh, okay, so um, because I voted in a very small community, um, my estate, um, it was it was largely very peaceful. Um, there was, um, well, I mean, there was a very low turnout in, in proportion to the number of um, registered voters, you know, um, 700, 700 plus to 163. And... Um, it was also, I mean, in terms of demography, it was also the very young people. Yeah, mostly, like about 80% of them were were very young people. Um, and um, for a closely knitted um, community, I figured out that um, security should not have been a problem or should not have been the excuse as to why people would not come out to vote. But unfortunately, I mean... Um, they really didn't come out to vote. In terms of um, the time that it started, um, at about 8, um, 8.39, they had not started. They were still trying to put a couple of things together, but um, they did start at about 10, and it was quite peaceful. The, the process was quite very transparent because... Um, Everybody got involved um, there. Everybody was really interested from the beginning to when they sorted out the electoral materials to the point where they had to upload and everything. Everybody was sitting down there with them and was very interested in how they were going about the process. So I can say that um, to a very large extent, my polling unit was very um, peaceful. Someone tried to foment trouble, though, but people were quick to say that. Listen, I mean, we're just here to vote, and there's but no, I want to ask there's no. Diola, at the yes, end please. of the process, was your yes. result uploaded to the server, the INEX server? Oh yes, it was because I I know that initially, you know, they had said that um, they wanted to leave and that um, they had issues with data or something. And somebody right there said that okay, if data was your problem, we're going to sort you with data right here, right now. And that um, the 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 tri um, the driver that was supposed to come and pick them, they were not going to allow them into the estate gate. So they told the guy to stay outside the estate gate. They locked the gate and they made sure that those guys actually did everything. Um, even before they started counting, the ballot papers that were not used, they insisted that they should cancel out everything right there so that there is no question of, okay, you still have these ballot um, papers and then you're trying to be funny with it. So we had to do all of that first. And then they started counting, and then they uploaded. Okay, great. Um, let me come to you, Chinelo. Your polling units, you know, in quickly, quick summary. Um, okay, so I mean, for us, it was relatively peaceful. It was organized as well. Everybody took turns to vote. Although our um, officers got there a bit two hours late, actually, but then it was fair enough because they extended our voting time by two hours as well. At the end of it all, they counted and then they uploaded. So we didn't have any issues with any of that, apart from a few party agents causing some ruckus here and there. But then, apart from that, every other thing went on well. Although I had expected, and I, I was going to ask this question. The Beavers machine, is it just for accreditation? Was it not also supposed to um, um, record the, the votes? I thought, okay, so when each person votes, the numbers will climb. 
on the the, the beavers. Well, well, so, and the beavers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I doubt that. It was just supposed to accredit and upload yes. the results. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Um, yes. Mama, do you, you, ha you have your two cents on this before I come to... Oh, yes, well, um, from the diaspora, and I did see quite a number of um, videos on some to be false, some to be true. But um, there was a lot of confusion. You know, there are a lot of videos that were showing, like, you're not really sure what to believe. So a lot of it spread some form of fear. Some people were, you know, it was it was um, a little bit concerning because you know when situations like this happen, it is based on the information that is fed to the media that people begin to emotions run wild. You know, uh, uh, people begin to to panic. And uh, I saw quite a bit of panic on some ends, while some ends uh, the. Messages that were received seemed to be quite peaceful, generally. But the major concern was the amount of information that was flying across the media platforms mm. to incite fear and uh, confusion. Absolutely. Let me bring in Kunle Lawal. Um, he's an entrepreneur, an idea generator, a TEDx speaker, and a patriot. He has a keen eye for opportunities based on his experience in the politics or in politics working with non-governmental organization under the federal government. He's a passionate Nigerian and, of course, he's also um, detribalized. He considers his boundaries to be limitless and is really focused on changing the Nigerian narrative in the political, uh, rather in political participation. And Kunle has joined us live also via Zoom. Thank you so much, Kunle Lawa, for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening. Wow, it's a pleasure to be here as usual. Good evening, Kule. So, um, I, I'd like to first of all just give a quick summary, right? My polling unit, we had voted, we had counted, and everything was done. Okay, upload our results, and the next thing they go is um, the server is not working, or rather, there's no network. And it was the same narrative, it was the same story across most of the polling unit reports that we got. Um, so, eventually, at about 10.30 or 10.13, or we checked at 10.30 that night, the INEC uh, website to check the uploaded results based on our polling unit, only for me to discover that they had uploaded the House of Representative um, sheet, result sheet, and it was not even clear, it was blurred. They had uploaded that in the place of the presidential um, results, right? This is a verifiable conversation. It's not a, you know, if you go there now, check, mm -hmm. click on my polling unit, my word in Koshofe local government, it was, it's still, even up until this morning, I still confirmed they had not rectified it. Now, what was the essence of Beavers in this election? Because to my mind, Beavers was supposed to be the integrity check. Beavers was supposed to be the machine that whatever happens, right? I'm not about any political party here. I'm about integrity of the process, mm. that the will of the people will stand. So what was the essence, first of all, of the beavers? And did it achieve its purpose based on your, um, what's it called, observation? Okay, so thank you very much. So first and foremost, um, we first have to first understand how the whole system works. Uh, I, I would say a lot of Nigerians were surprised at systems and how they failed and how things went bad. And that was because I think adequate political education was not paid attention to by Nigerians. So I'll start. You accredit, which is what's supposed to happen. You vote. After voting, voting are, votes are counted. After they are counted, now this is critical. The result sheet, which had what the parties scored, needs to be signed and stamped and shown to the voters. I want to ask in your polling unit, was this shown to you, stamped and signed? Kunle Did you get a picture of it? We all took pictures of the signed, um, what's it called, result sheet. We all took the pictures. It's okay. I'm just following you through the process. Politics is not emotional. Let's keep it very calm. <laughs> Let's just walk through the process. So, it's signed and stamped. You have that. You should be able to send or communicate that to INEC directly if that is not what is on the IREV portal. 
So if what is on the portal is different and it's blurry, you should send, communicate your polling unit, communicate your location, the world, LG, and the state, and send that to the INE, uh, to INE. You They have response system channels, has one, a lot of media houses have one. You could just um, reach out to these situation rooms and present this information. This information will be used and it will be collected and it will be corrected. Trust me on that. So we need to trust that process. So the way INEC built it, this is supposed to happen after it's signed, stamped, and then it is sent. Now, it needs to be sent immediately, not in the night, not the day after, not because we've had excuses across Nigeria. Um, well, we're part of situation rooms, I think about five or six across Nigeria. We've had of ad hoc staff who said they felt like they needed to go and take a shower before they uploaded on the Vivas. Some said uh, they needed to... They needed to uh, watch if uh, watch. They were thinking of the food next next day's football match, and they forgot. Um, a lot of things happened, and I, for me, I call it the Nigerian factor. So this 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 these colorations or anomalies, which you've named this uh, particular conversation over, occurred a lot. And um, you need to first critically understand that as much as INEC is INEC, we need to understand that INEC first recruits ad hoc staff who are barely trained in uh, in two months to go and manage an election that is across 923,000 square kilometers of country in Nigeria. Um, it's very critical that also the security agents are not enough. We have 176,600 uh, polling units and uh, the security agents deployed are approximately 400,000. Uh, if you put that and you juxtapose that, that to make it about 2.5 uh, security agents per polling unit. Now, what's most shocking is that Nigeria has 93.4 million voters. Imagine all the voters in Nigeria came out with 400,000 be able to secure the exact um, situation. So there are take-homes from what has happened. And, you know, we've criticized the whole system. So I think there are take-homes from this which could be used. Now, I think, I think take-homes are Nigeria right now is not strong enough or large enough to conduct a one-day election. I'm, I'm one of the proponents, and I've been pushing it forward. I, I, I am writing a memo to INEC, and I still would be putting, pushing forward my recommendation that Nigerian national elections become staggered, about six states per day. When we go like that and the results come out, it will be manageable. Because like, you see what happened in... And I know a lot of people are concerned with the anomalies they're seeing. Let's go back and take the Austrian case, which is, which is where, of course... Um, INEC, uh, the defendant who is now the governor, uh, called up, called, asked INEC, which is guaranteed by the uh, Electoral Act 2022, uh, recalled the BIVAS accreditation numbers. And INEC had, uh, is forced by law to provide that. And once that is provided, some votes that were calculated or over voting that was noticed can be brought down by a lot of parameters. Uh, I heard somebody say something about BIVAS recording votes. Or whatever, it just records the result sheet. So this result sheet that you have, you get to the appropriate, to the, to the correct quarters, as long as it was stamped and signed, and multiple people report that, um, you get you get a result on your polling unit. So, Kunle Lawa, beavers were meant to upload results at polling units. And I can tell you for free that majority of those polling units never got the chance for the for their, what's it called, result sheet to be uploaded at the polling unit, mm. right? Some of them, it was with a lot of war. Now, the, the particular polling unit I stayed back till 10.30 a.m. was we had told them that if you do not upload this thing, you are not leaving. We didn't st finish voting until about 5, I mean, about 4, 4 a.m. We started counting the votes. We finished at around 5 a.m. To even fill the re result sheet, they would say, oh, they are looking for a particular code. At some polling unit, the guy was claiming, I don't even know how to fill the sheet. When you then eventually fill the sheet to take the picture and upload it into the, uh, the I IREF server, they did not do that. Right? And this thing went across. So how do we even test the integrity of this election that was just concluded? How do we test it? How do we trust the process? Because some people have argued that we have to wait. Let them announce the result that we go to the tribunal. Yeah. But when I when you are even seeing it glaring that from the from the goal, whatever it is that you're announcing doesn't seem to correlate with what the numbers and the figures that we have recorded on our own. How do we fold our arms and watch this continue? 
credible, credible elections in a country anywhere in the world are guaranteed not by the electoral commission, but guaranteed by the electorate. That's the honest truth. So as much as INEC is trying to push forward a good election, it is only right that the onus is on the citizens, like you guys did, that this must be uploaded by INEC, uh, by the ad hoc staff at the polling you at the PU immediately. You insist that that's the right thing to do. And there's a good thing with Beavers, as long as it, the information was imputed, once it accesses network, to send that information directly to, to INEC servers. So as long as the information which was on it was done properly and you were there, trust me, the moment it has access to internet to transmit it to that INEC servers, that is, that is in place. So I, 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 I don't represent INEC. You need to understand this. And then you, of course, they have a, a PRO to do this, to manage this. I think his name is First or Sekoe. He, he can manage this. But what I'm trying to do is what I understand from one side of the fence and, you know, on the trying to appease what you are trying to do as, an, as a, a very unhappy uh, person who voted. And I'm trying to balance the status quo. So I know what's being done on this side and I know what's being done on the other side. And we're trying to put a full bridge. You don't need to wait for a tribunal. You don't need to wait for the end of an election, uh, an ele an election cycle. Send your, your results as signed and stamped right now. You should have done that actually as uh, yesterday. Thank you. Okay. Let me come to the this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Kuni, you said credible election is actually up to the electorate, not the electoral commission. So I'd like to ask, so what happened in the, in the sense of overvoting and underage voting? Is that also the fault of the electorate and not the electoral commission? If you're asking me, you know, for instance, I need to remind you guys I am not INE. I need to obviously remind you guys. So to this anger I'm feeling, you, know, you guys need to chill. Uh -huh. So where were we? So underage voting, yes, the registrations of underage voting. Do they have those cards? Yes, they do. In the cases where they have the cards, it would be very, very hard to detect. Because you can't separate a name or an age. The age was falsified for the person to have it card. So it might not be able to tell. But in the case of overvoting, I will call again into question the Osho state elections, where in cases, Beavers records all accredited voters. Now, I will tell you about the Electoral Act 2010, and I'll tell you the improvements in the Electoral Act 2020. So in the Electoral Act 2010, if a PU, that's a polling unit, had exactly 1,000 people, INEC was only concerned with the voting not exceeding those 1,000 people, whether 20 were accredited or not. Now, in the 2020 Electoral Act, as long as the number accredited was, let's say, 850, of a polling unit that has, let's say, 1,500, INEC is only concerned with the 850. And if there is a situation of overvoting, that will be dealt with. And that was what happened in Osho that led to the upturn of the Adele case situation. So as much as we do not, though I don't think anybody in the world supports underage voting or anybody supports anything wrong, I will say these situations, I would always call them and context them and package them under the Nigerian factor or the, NG, the, the amazing predictability of electoral ingenuity by politicians. Is that the other number? Uh, go ahead, please. All right, um, I wanted to ask, now, uh, democratic societies are supposed to be doing their own principles of free and fair elections, right? And citizens being able to have their votes count. So in this case of the INEC, who had promised Nigerians that everything was ready to be able to hold elections? So having no manpower now, it's obvious that this is an anomaly. For you to have promised Nigerians and everything is ready, that means increasing of the manpower that is required to carry out elections successfully across Nigeria should have been put in place. But from the results that we're seeing and um, certain cases that happened in different areas in the country, it was obvious that there were cases of low manpower. So how can this be rectified? How can I make 
rectified the situation for subsequent elections. Thank you very much, Norma. And I, 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 I said this earlier. I don't know whether you caught it. And my position was kind of simple over it. I don't believe that Nigeria, and I'm writing, like I said, I'm writing a recommendation to INEC. I don't believe Nigeria can conduct um, ele an election across 932,000 square meters and across 93.4 million people. What I think we should do is have staggered election, pick six days, six states a day, and then just flow across the parameters, release the results immediately. We'll be able to reduce and focus our security forces, which are less than uh, 500,000 put together. We'll be able to focus our security forces on exactly just six states and actually combating and ensuring electoral, electoral security and ensuring that these things are done properly. I think the fact that we try to promote or we try to handle 36 states uh, in one day is cumbersome. I would say even the American elections are staggered. And, 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 and so is with most countries. Now, you would not compare yourself to the UK, which runs a parliamentary system and votes within a political party. And even when it's going to vote a consensus, the population of the UK is not up to Cardinal State alone. And, and, and that's, that, therein lies the problem. Uh, so I, I, I think that, that, um, we, INEC needs to revisit its system. It needs to understand its exact threats. And then it needs to find, do a perfect uh, SWOT analysis on these present elections and, and take, take in cognizance recommendations that are being put forward by others in the space to ensure that um, these elections are free and fair. Now, this is not to punch the electorate at all, but um, we also need to be very, very clear on the kind of um, understanding the Electoral Act as citizens. And we also need to be um, very well politically literate in understanding the exact uh, things that need to be done as a, as a citizen. So that um, if everybody is armed with the law and understand what cannot be done and what can be done, situations like where the ad hoc staff said they were going to upload the thing the next day, uh, people would have stood like they stood at OAS pol polling unit and say, if we are not uploading here, you're not leaving here. But we have these situations across the country. Um, and it's all because, you know, a few people did not know. So um, it's, it's, it's INEX mandate. INEX mandate is one thing. Um, but I still say the people too need to understand the mandate and push INEC for uh, uh, such credible things. I, and I also remember that INEC is an entity that can be sued or can sue. So I do not see why citizens have not taken it into their arms and said, you know what, this is totally not what we expected. Or, yeah, um, these elections went the way the numbers or the positions are the way they are, but no, some numbers have been altered along the way and say, INEC, we hold you to account on this and you should defend with reasonable cause why such things are that way. I, that, that power lies in the citizen, being honest. And I know that right now, the, 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 the four women I'm, I'm with here, they want to have me for breakfast with the way I'm looking at Owa's eyes and co. But I keep reminding you, I do not represent INEC and I'm trying to form a bridge between what the law is and how it is impartially. Okay, Let, mm. Kule, trust me, I want to do more than have you for breakfast. <laughs> uh, because, uh, I don't know, for some strange reason, a lot of people truly believed in this um, system. And that's why everybody came out, you know, with their PVCs and all of that. But So it's, it's just, you know, I, I can't explain how I feel. But let's take a break, right? When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. I think Diola has a question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the 2023 elections, the anomalies and the way forward. And we have with us Kunle Lawal. Uh, remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to rate 1-803-4663. You can also tweet at us at WaysHowAfrica1 or the hashtag WaysHow. Diola, you had a question, right? Okay, so something happened at my polling unit. I, well, I'm, I'm not sure as to the authenticity of it, but um, I remember that, I mean, you know, when the queue, when the, the queue was so much, when people came and all that, um, there was a lot of agitation around the fact that um, we needed to be done by 2.30. 
And I was wondering, I mean, what happened at 2.30? And, you know, there were some talks from the um, agents that, oh, um, the beavers or whatever, or they don't know if the thing was going to shut down. So whatever they don't do by 2.30, it won't count. So now, I mean, in retrospect, this happened and my polio mm-hmm. unit, you know. So everybody was quite proactive in trying to ensure that, you know, we also helped the agents to make that time because, of course, nobody wanted to be disenfranchised. So I'm imagining that if this was maybe the um, the position of um, INEC, maybe this was an instruction given to the agent, would this have been replicated in other polling units? And how much of this would have actually disenfranchised people from actually participating in the vote, considering that a lot of them, a lot of the INEC officials even got to their polling units very late. So does it mean that all the polling units where they even took the voting, I mean, till 10 p.m., like Ua said, or 3 p.m. or 5 p.m., they just won't tell the electorate. It just means that that kind of vote is just, you know, is declared um, void or, I, I mean, I mean that was that was very confusing for me. So I don't know if um, Kunle Lawal can shed some light on that. Well, now what I'm about to say, you will eye me a little bit more, but I have to say because it's the law and it's what's tenable in Nigeria. INEC mm-hmm. and ESOs in Nigeria spent over one year telling you people how the process was. If you didn't choose to look at it, uh, I don't think we can blame anybody for that except the electorate, but I'm going to repeat the process for you clearly. So voting starts, um, INEC registration and everything starts at about 8, eight o'clock. And uh, this is supposed to continue. Now, what happens at 2.30 is that nobody who is not on the queue, if you are on the queue at 2.30, you are accepted, meaning you have till 2.30 to find your way to your polling unit. But if you are not on the queue by 2.30, according to the laws and the directive set by INEC, you will not be allowed to join the queue and vote. You need to be on the queue before 2.30. This does not mean the PIVAS is not working. This is because we have an election we plan to complete in a day. This is also because we know Nigerians will choose to come 7 o'clock if we let them. I'm not INEC, but generally if we let Nigerians, we know what they're capable of doing. So there's a 2.30 tag for when you must reach your polling unit. And this is not, and this information was critically shared. It was massively spent money on. But, you know, kind of people are more interested in whether you let Doche as a side chick or not. And and that's what's more important in Nigeria. And for me, I think I'm not Kule, going to be nice with pardon. the electorate. When... Kule, no, 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 no. Okay, I beg your I pardon. Mean, this if, particular if, if, process, right? See, maybe Nigerians in the past were not interested in politics. For the first time, I must say that I am super proud of every Nigerian. Because a lot of Nigerians, they knew the laws, they knew the process. And let me tell you for well, free. When these people started acting up at the polling unit where my sister uh, uh, eventually voted, guess what? The woman came up at, at 12 midnight saying that ideally she's not supposed to be doing this thing because, you know, the time is way past. I said, it's a lie, madam. We know the law. The law says that you should be here before 2.30. A lot of these people came at 8 a.m. You deliberately dragged the process until it got to 3.30 a.m. before some people could cast their vote. Right, and the law says you do not leave until the last person casts their vote. So you are the one that is putting the delays, and you are the one that would reap the consequences of the delay. Well, well, right? Well, 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 so I beg well, your, I beg your well, pardon. Well, well, not everybody was interested well, well, in Yule well, Doche and well, his side chick. No, well, we were interested well, in this politics. And for, for as far as I'm concerned, well, well, INEC failed us. Well, well, that's a totally. Well, that's a totally separate situation. You have left what we're talking about, which was 2.30, and jumped into another separate situation, which was the ad hoc staff coming late. That's a separate situation, which, the, which of course, will mean another thing. So if the INEC was, uh, staff was not there, to check, it is up to you to alert, call up INEC contacts and uh, let them know. And INEC will not stop you. Wait, please. Oh, i let you finish. So um, INEC will not stop you. And it is clearly within your rights as a Nigerian, as a citizen, to ensure that you vote. So, INEC, if they come late in those situations, and in some situations which occurred that went on till night, and I have case studies of Bielsa and multiple... Uh, well, you need to remember that 
we were taking monitoring positions from across Nigeria. Oh, I knew what went on. I'm not talking of one spot. I'm not talking of one flash. Okay, let's, let's move on. Generally, let's move on. Let's move on. I want to ask a question. So, for, hold on. For polling units where they did not even vote at all because the voting materials did not get to them, right? Is it right for the INEC chairman to be announcing results for polling units where clearly some people were disenfranchised and they did not vote at all? I need to make clear the process again. If if if, if, the, if the if the if the resident electoral commissioner of that state declares results there in a case where people have reported, remember that you must report this. That will be corrected because the INEC chairman is responding to the results that he has been handed over to by the rep. Not that he's responding to the fact he knows there was no election in that place and then decided to read, read an election. So you need to understand these things. And, and the truth is, I'm not, like I said, I'm not INEC and I'm not defending INEC. But I understand the process in which all this works around. And I'm just trying to lay it out clear so that there's, ev everything is open. So you're not saying it's this person or it's that person. I'm making it clear. That means the state rec of that particular state is culpable. The truth is that Nigerians will scream restructuring so much and we never ever pay attention to the levels of processing. We, are just, we just stop with the end, which is the product. INEC chairman, slaughter him. No, that's not how it is. There are people who have made mistakes along the line, probably a, a, word, a word rack or, a, or, or a, a state rec who must have allowed these things happen. You can't, yes, the INEC chairman will read it based on it's his job as arbiter to tell, collect such results from the state rec and read them. But that does not mean that INEC will not go into total review of all these things and all these matters eventually. They're just doing what they need to do right now as required by law. And I'm not INEC who are, that you are throwing bombs at this season. No, I'm not like, throwing bombs at you, Kunle. We are having a conversation, right? I am just trying to express my frustration. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, right, this was a, a, a process that was supposed to be transparent. This was a process that everybody actually believed that their PVC could speak for them. And not, so the, the, the thing, the point is, if INEC was, was, um, had a little bit of integrity in the process and uploaded the results at polling units just as it promised us from day one, and we saw the results, everybody would take the results. Based on the, at least we had seen that, okay, our results that we counted, our results that we saw, the sheet, everything was uploaded right. But how can you tell me the same story across board? Oh, the, the network is not going. The network is not going and it's not, and, and, if, and somebody is still trying to tell me that we should be quiet and watch them announce those kinds of falsified results. That is why a Senator Dino Minaye would walk out of the INEC um, Coalition Center in Abuja. So, so what is the way Dino forward? Now. I need to I need to first make this clear. There's adult staff employed by INEC. Some of them might have been culpable, or a lot of them might have been culpable. The situations in which results were not recorded or the anomalies in in which situations happened. Flash spots are Lagos, Rivers, Bayelsa, parts of a little few parts of Abuja, uh, Kebi. Kebi was way behind that to start almost again because of the problems. I'm clear with this information. But if you count other states like Plateau where voting went smoothly and a lot of other states, it begs to answer one critical question. And I'm being very dicey with this. It begs to answer the places that became flashpoints with elections. It is clear beyond reasonable doubt that some things were altered according to, to some people's preferences. And that is what happened. It is, wasn't INEX intention. It was the nefarious activities of a few set of politicians. Now, I'm restricted to what I can say and what I cannot say till some things are verified. But I'm being very clear from what we have seen, from what we've picked up from situation rooms, some things happened because some, some people in control of some particular places. And this is not INEX. This is INEX ad hoc staff. I need to make that very clear. And those were the problems which uh, eventually encountered. Did INEC envision this? Yes, they should have. If they didn't, then I think the chairman is culpable enough not to have wanted to deliver a very clear election because he must have tried to see this out. Yes, you can't see everything in this kind of situations, but INEC should have a response that gives Nigerians the basis to understand that this election was credible and, and, and fair. 
Let me keep quiet for now. <laughs> Diola, <laughs> Norma, do you want to come in? <laughs> so, um, Kunle, what would you, in your, in your expert opinion, what are some of the recommendations that you can give moving forward if we're to experience an even more credible election process? What are the key areas or key points that you need to push out to the authorities or whoever needs to listen? What, what are the things that we need to pay attention to if we're to have credible or to even reduce to the barest minimum these anomalies that we've experienced so far? No, ma, thank you very much. And no, ma, I stated one earlier. One, Nigeria needs to stagger its elections, whether it's six days per day and then run it across six days or seven days with the FCT, and that would be fine. We should have our elections. I had mentioned this earlier because it's proved from 1999 yeah. till now that it's totally impossible for us to handle the power of Nigeria. And it's not a bad thing. The U.S. does something like that because the U.S. is quite large. And, and you know, if you look at also Chinese elections, it's not, it's not, uh, how do I put it? It's not, it's not a, a click and get, get the winner. It's not a jackpot or a casino. So we need to be able to stagger our elections because we aren't that we aren't, we aren't there yet. Second thing is, I think um, INEC and a few other things have been very lax on candidates and political parties. On such infringements, everybody seems to understand that things can be done. I'll give you an example. We saw uh, videos and things going on uh, that were verified. Or people saying, if you do not vote a certain a certain party, uh, nobody should vote in that polling unit. I, the thing is that what we've done in Nigeria is blame the problem and not attack the problem from the roots. And for me, I think any party should be penalized by 10,000 votes if that ever happens in any polling unit. So we need to also review our electoral laws and get people punished for doing the wrong thing properly. And it's not good enough for us to say oh, arrest and punish by imprisonment, according to the electoral law, the people that committed these crimes. What of the people who control the people to punish to commit these crimes? They are the main accessories and they are guilty of the, the truth. So I, they are going to be left alone. Guys just caught are just going to be dealt with. I'm, I'm strongly of the opinion for every one person you catch stealing a bad box or breaking the electoral laws, the political party should pay with a minus of 1,000 votes immediately per person. I, I think when that happens, we're going to really get serious and nobody's going to try to upturn something which is the civic right and responsibility of every Nigerian. I like, I like your suggestions, Kunle. And I, I wanted to ask you now, right? Thank you. For, for the way forward now, with this election that has held, because we cannot wait for another election cycle mm -hmm. to do the staggered elections, for this ones that has held, right? Because again, it's not like these people don't see videos, right? They see the videos, they see the proofs, but they come up to tell you that he's doctored. Now, a lot of Nigerians took snapshots of their result sheets. But you know how we are in a country where they will tell you that, oh, that result sheet that you snapped, that is falsified, it is only the one that comes from the agent. Now, we've been seeing so many videos flying around of multiple of um, um, tom printing by one um, INEC agent, the ad hoc staffs, and all of that. But nothing has been said by the INEC chairman. Nothing has been done, right? So what is the way forward for this particular elections that we just concluded? What do we do? With all of these things that has happened, you said one thing before, that we should petition the INEC, uh, 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 INEC, right? We should petition them. We should start writing a petition against them. What else can we do as citizens? I think um, a lot of CSOs have taken, which I'm aware, have taken a, 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 a full hand on this, and they want to put together a database of all these um, um, polling unit discrepancies and put them together and then, you know, face INEC with one direct square of blue. I know this is being done and I know, I'm know i also aware of, I cannot reveal that much, but I, I'm also aware of a lot of work being done to, to ensure that this process is credible by people which include, of course, even the Electoral College, which I stand. But like I said, I cannot uh, divulge too much information while speaking, but and this is not because I can't, it's because in the process to protect, you know, what is coming. And I must clearly state this, that... Um, the woman that was in Nasarawa, I believe she has been arrested, and a lot of things were, were yeah, there's an attempt to correct, you know, quite a lot of misnomers that happened there with her, with her checking and her whatever she was doing. I think where the problem lies is that INEC wants us to report directly to them with timestamps when these things happen, the other polling units, 
and etc. And I think we need to be able to do this as citizens. Okay, so my, my question is actually very simple. You see that process of us having to show the ballot and then start counting APC1, APC2. I think that process is actually very mind-boggling and time-wasting. So how can we improve the process of counting? <laughs> By voting electronically. I can answer you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's it. No, ma, no, ma I would answer this very simply. Um, I've always been a proponent of e-election. In my time within a political party, I believe um, we, with the conjunction and help of my office, the first intra-party e-election and only intra-party e-election ratified by and it was done by myself and the party. So I, I, I've always been a proponent of e-elections. I know that um, a lot of politicians are scared they will not emerge or win. Um, I'm also a proponent for the fact that e-elections can help curb security issues that we have. Most people have said, ah, well, it could be hacked. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I keep laughing. We trust our, and trust our money with banks, exactly. and we cannot, and the, and the, the USSD code, mm -hmm. where we can trust our savings. For one vote, you can't entrust it with... Uh, but you know, you know our politicians will never agree to e-voting now. How yes. else will they tell you that they have 10 billion voters <laughs> in, in certain parts of the country? Let's take comments because we ran out of time. <laughs> Uh, no man, um, Chinelo. Okay, so um, this one is from Austin, Austin from Delta. And Austin says, I totally disagree with your guest. INEC failed woefully because beavers are supposed to be an integrity test. Not uploading the results real time felt suspicion and lack of transparency. Why was it possible to upload that of reps as overstated and that of presidential wasn't? Why should your guest place the burden on citizens to upload, whereas there is a body responsible for that, having assured Nigerians that they were ready? It's a sham. It's a shame, I think he means. While I am not overlooking the issue of fluctuating network at times, why was electronic transmission system not upscaled before the election with all the money pumped in? Let me tell you the truth. Confidence is eroded, giving room to conspiracy theory. Apart from beavers, how do they explain late arrival at polling units and lack of sufficient ink? If they know they were not ready, why did they mouth this? Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Austin. No more quickly. All right, so this is from Daniel Elo, and he says, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag wave. 2023 elections, anomalies, and the way forward. My main experience on election day was that accreditation that was supposed to start at 8 a.m. did not start till almost 11 a.m., and voting commenced immediately. Secondly, the figures concerning the election results that I have been seeing is highly unacceptable. I smell a rat and suspect vote buying and falsification of results. No shadow of doubt about that. And the ABC pre and presidential candidates reacting to his defeat in legal states. I really don't understand. Well, uh, candidates win in legal states and it's is it a do or die affair? He's asking a question. So three bozas to my dear beautiful sister Chinelo for hosting the show for over one week. She did a marvelous and amazing job. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel Ilo. Thank you so much. Bokunle, thank you so much for being our guest today. And sorry, this is not yes, an attack. I, this is not an I, attack. I enjoyed my time. On on, you. <laughs> I enjoyed my time on the cross. I enjoyed my time on the cross, but I'm going to close and say this. You see, before you accuse a system, you need to understand it. And you know, when I listen to your guests, your, your comments, I keep remembering how politically illiterate Nigeria is. And it's, it's no offense. You, you feel that because I didn't make a statement and say this guy is a thief, this one stole his votes, that's, that's what you want to hear. It will happen. And I'll tell you why. Because I know what, what exactly is going on. I'm not going to say that on, on TV. So. Anyway, it was a great show. I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed my time here. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to and bring you nice again, and we're going to do the bus bus again. <laughs> uh, next time, I'm coming with with guns blazing. Please, and it will be nice. And you have to be live in the studio so that I can I can give you a, a fist. <laughs> but thank you so much, Kulela. Well, you are always an amazing guest. Thank you, Chinelo. Thank you, Norma, and thank you, Diola. All right, so before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. 
a nation can be born in a day. The day righteousness is granted access and corruption is banned. I think this is a very, very powerful quote. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.